super glue. It can be intimidating. Yet, I think it's transformed me as an aquascaper. I find myself in a love-hate relationship with it. I have created things that would have been impossible without it. And I've experienced horrors working with it. I'm Jeff Miyake, professional aquascaper, and welcome to my home where I put stuff in glass boxes. Yeah, so horrors, like the countless times I've got it on my hands or when I've glued my fingers to hardscape and there was the one time when I dropped a blob of the thick stuff right into the aquarium only to get it sucked into a power head. Picture that. Uh, and the time where I spilled the thin stuff onto my pants and it felt like it was going to light on fire. And the dumbest thing, wearing the wrong gloves. And after this, you'll know why. All these things sound dreadful. So why do I keep using this stuff? Well, because it's excellent at its job of combining things. And as an aquascaper, this comes up a lot. Today, we are diving into superglue from an aquascaper's perspective. And maybe the ups and downs will help you with your own superglue relationship. My own started to evolve once I understood what it really is and how it works. Superglue is the common name for ethyl cyanoacrylate adhesive. Simply put, it forms strong bonds and all it takes is being exposed to the moisture in the air or on the surface of the hardscape. There are many brands on the market and each has different formulations, but all are predominantly composed of ethyl cyanoacrylate. Two other common ingredients you may see are thickener like polymethyl methacrylate. This changes the viscosity from watery to the consistency of honey and anywhere in between. This is very handy as we will get to shortly. And inhibitors like hydroquinone, which helps prevent hardening of the glue within the bottle, also very handy. Different brands have their own proprietary blends of these and other chemicals. This means you may prefer one brand over another, which means I don't have a short answer to what is the best super glue. I'll leave that up to you. Let's get a little deeper and look at how it works beyond the obvious. We know it creates very strong bonds. However, it is at its strongest against pulling forces. When it comes to shearing force, it's only moderately strong. A failure to understand this concept has led to more than one aquascaper's catastrophic failure. I'll demonstrate. Okay, so if pulling force, if we bind these together like this and we pull exactly opposite of the bond, that's when super glue is at its strongest. If I were to say, snap it like this, torque it, it will snap quite easily, which is also handy because we can then unglue our stones. So strong, weak, these actions, that's called shearing. So what does that mean for us? The takeaway is that it binds materials really well, but it will not hold up heavy objects like stones or big pieces of wood. Put them together, let it bond. At this point, if we let the second stone sit on the base stone here, it's going to be fairly strong because the stone is holding up the other stone. If we start tipping it like this, now the uh, force is going to be on the glue and it's going to be a shearing force. This is shearing force, right? This is pulling, this is shearing. So this is going to be a weak joint for superglue. We can't trust this. This is what leads to a collapse. We can get away with maybe a smaller stone like this. We can put a small stone on here because the weight of this is so little, the glue is strong enough to hold it from shearing off. And finally, the thing about super glue that has caused more problems and the reason for my love-hate relationship is drying or technically the curing process. 
There are three ways we can go about this process, and all three have their place in aquascaping. The first method is to simply drip it on the hardscape surfaces and press them together. Moisture in the air and within the materials is all it takes to start the curing process. The more surface area exposed to the moisture, the faster the curing time. However, too much moisture, as in wet, is really bad. That is how we end up with the white streaks that run down our hardscape. So we need to clean our hardscape and remove any dust and dirt as that prevents a good bond and then let it dry. Now we have our materials ready. We want to bind them, but they are irregular and joining them isn't always easy. Let me demonstrate. So here we have two stones. And if I place these stones, you can see that there is a gap. If we wanted them end to end like this, there's a gap right in the middle. So um, we're going to end up with these gaps and these gaps require a lot more glue. That in turn means it will slow down the curing and in my experience this can take hours, even days, when we lay it down very thick and when we are building an aquascape with tens if not hundreds of pieces to combine, this is just too slow. This is where our second method shines. This method starts by using something like paper towel, paper tissues, or cigarette filters, which were used when this technique was popularized. Placing this papery material into the gap and then soaking it with thin superglue, this creates a situation where we have a large surface area, which we know is good for fast curing. And not only that, but the common material in all these is cellulose. And in layman's terms, the cellulose has a similar chemical behavior as the moisture in the air. And it gets even better because these materials are absorbent and will soak up that liquid superglue, creating even more surface area for the reaction to almost instantaneously complete. The result within just a few seconds is a plasticky material that effectively fills the gap and bonds the hardscape very well. So it's simple to use and it works well. I love it. However, the downside is white blobs all over your hardscape that looks like someone discarded their chewing gum or cigarette butts, but no worries. There is a simple solution for that. We can use a bit more glue on these blobs and cover it with sand or hardscape dust or crushed aqua soil. Great, problem solved, it's the perfect method. But wait, there is one more issue during the curing. A fine smoke is released and floats up. And through experience, it is a harsh irritant, especially to the eyes. After a nasty incident of getting these fumes into my own eyes and feeling the intense burning, I stopped using this method. And some internet searching later, it's still a mystery to what's in those fumes. Regardless, it's still commonly used by many, if not the majority of aquascapers today. And I haven't heard of any permanent damage, so who knows? And my tumultuous relationship continues with super glue. It's still is the best option to bind hardscape and I keep searching for a better way and came across it in the reefing community. Super glue has been used by coral enthusiasts for a long time to mount their coral fragments to these mounting plugs and more recently by reefing aquascapers to create more elaborate and natural reef layouts. What grabbed my attention was that they were curing the glue very quickly by using either baking soda, which again has similar chemical characteristics of water that kicks off the curing, but more intriguing, they were using something in a spray bottle. Inspired by them, I did a little research and the spray turns out to be Super glue accelerator. I experimented using different brands of thick super glue and accelerator and found a combination that worked. 
and it worked really well. So much so that I've been using this method now for a few years. The results are so much cleaner as there are no white plasticky chewing gum blobs. And you add um, optionally a little dust on top of the glue uh, before applying the accelerator. And within seconds, you can barely tell it was glued at all. And no fine smoke. Of course, the relationship doesn't end there. The accelerator created a new concern. This stuff has an odor and it doesn't smell great. It smells chemically, though some say it smells like berries. The accelerator is a chemical called dimethyl p which is then dissolved in some volatile organic compounds like ethyl benzene and xylene. So it appears to be a petroleum based product. None of this sounds ideal. What I decided is to follow the safety precautions on the label and do my gluing in a well ventilated space like outside. And then afterwards I rinse the piece off and let it dry. However, I still didn't like spritzing this stuff. I use a small paintbrush that I can just dip into the bottle and paint it onto one of the pieces and place the glue on the other and then join them together. This certainly reduces the odor significantly, which I believe means less is getting into the air, which means less is getting into me. It still works, but takes hmm, maybe like 20 to 30 seconds to cure versus just spraying it directly on the glue which in some cases it's more desirable, allowing a bit more time to adjust those positions. My experience using this now extends back about six years and I haven't noticed any issues with fish, shrimp, or the plants. But you decide for yourself what method works best for you and it won't hurt my feelings if you decide to use super glue at all. In the last six months, I've been using much less glue and instead relying on my skills and saving the glue for those creations that are, aren't possible otherwise. My relationship with super glue is currently lukewarm. <laughs> and who knows, a better method might be found in the not so distant future. Knowing something about the safety of using super glue has provided me with some comfort and given me the confidence to continue using it. Both the super glue and accelerator are household products and are widely available. They come with safety data sheets. All brands must provide them and they are usually very easy to find online. Find them for your glue of choice and make sure you are comfortable with those risks and handling it safely. Also, while you are at it, find all the other chemical products you use in your home. You may not like what you read and then search for friendlier alternatives. Yeah, love, hate. Even with care, super glue seems to get everywhere. Let's start with a simple one to fix. Drips on the aquarium glass. Just wait for it to cure and then using a razor blade, scrape it off. It usually pops off in one piece like it was never there. However, the silicone seams may be another story. Obviously, it's critical not to damage the silicone. I can't say I've ever had this happen, and I have no advice for this one. So if you have, drop a comment and let us know if it is stuck there forever, or is there an easy fix? And another place is on the hardscape. Whether it was placed intentionally and we changed our minds, or it drips on there, hardscape is not disposable and we want to reuse it over and over. I find that many times the glue can be sheared off, right? Sheer strength, sheared, sheer strength is weak, or we can get uh, players on it, pull it off um, with some torque. And um, another great way is to get a screwdriver underneath a little corner of it and pop it off. And the most annoying place it ends up is our hands. I have experienced this too often and unfortunately our hands have oils and moisture and are great at rapidly curing the glue. I find that even when I'm careful it still happens. So 
every time this has happened, it's been a minor inconvenience and I can just pull the skin apart um, or the object off my hand. This rips off the outer layer of the skin, but it's such a thin layer, I don't even notice it afterwards. Any residue left behind either washes off with soap and water or drops off on its own in a few days. To avoid this situation, the solution is obvious. Wear gloves. The nitrile or PVC gloves work just fine, but you still need to work cleanly or you'll be replacing the gloves frequently as they glue together and become mittens. <laughs> also, don't use paper or cotton towel to wipe off spills. It will just instantly cure and bond to the surface like your skin and create heat. And I mentioned earlier wearing the wrong gloves. I had cotton gloves on while doing a demo to keep my hands clean. Cotton, we now know, is made of cellulose. I spilled thin super glue on one of the fingers and of course it glued the glove to my hand and created a lot of heat with intense burning, like touching a hot stove. Turns out the curing process is exothermic, which means it generates heat. And because cellulose causes rapid curing, a rapid buildup of heat. I had this happen one other time, spilling thin super glue on my jeans. In both cases, there was no real damage done. So while this one sucks, I don't worry about it. And finally, acetone. Acetone dissolves superglue. Nail polish remover will remove superglue as well because it contains acetone. There is also a branded product called Uncure or DMF that's very capable of dissolving it. Again, read the safety data sheets and decide if you are okay with the risks. But these may be very helpful in certain situations cleaning up a mess. So love it or hate it, you now have the information you need to decide what your own relationship with superglue will look like. Today, we talked about what superglue is, what to look for. We went over how it works when it comes to aquascaping and three easy, effective ways to use it and wrapped up with safety, including some simple tips to help you out of a sticky situation. Now go scape something. See ya. Bye.